out here trying to have no image. I'm just giving the people me who I am. Nathaniel Dwayne Hale, widely recognized as Nate Dogg, was an American singer and rapper celebrated for his soulful vocals and legendary collaborations. Renowned as the king of hooks, Nate Dogg imprinted an everlasting legacy on the realms of hip-hop and R&B. Yet, obscured behind the limelight, his life unfolded amidst legal woes, personal battles, and health challenges that would ultimately steer him toward a fate marked by tragedy. Breakthrough. Nate Dogg was born in Clarksdale, Mississippi on August 19, 1969. Growing up as the son of a Baptist minister, Nate was surrounded by the soulful melodies that echoed through the walls of his family's church. From an early age, Nate's passion for music was evident. He found solace and joy in singing, and it became a way for him to express himself. Nate Dogg would often showcase his vocal talents at the New Hope Baptist Church where his father preached. I started a kids' choir at the church. so. That's what we've done. Our family is just singing. The church choir became his training ground, where his powerful voice captivated the congregation week after week. Little did he know that these humble beginnings would lay the foundation for his future success. But life in Clarksdale was not without its challenges. The town was plagued by poverty and racial tensions, which cast a shadow over Nate's formative years. However, he refused to let these obstacles define him. Instead, he channeled his energy into his music, using it as a means of escape and self-expression. At the age of 14, Nate's life took an unexpected turn. His parents divorced, and he moved to Long Beach, California. Long Beach, California, in the late 1960s, was a city teeming with creativity and musical talent. As Nate grew older in Long Beach, his love for music only intensified. He would spend hours listening to the radio, soaking in the sounds of various genres, from gospel to R&B. It was during these moments that he discovered his own unique style, a blend of soulful singing and rhythmic flow. Long Beach Polytechnic High School, where Nate Dogg attended, became a breeding ground for musical talent. And it was here that he would meet two individuals who would become lifelong collaborators and friends. One of those individuals was Warren G., a fellow student at Long Beach Polytechnic High School. The two quickly bonded over their shared love for music and began collaborating on various musical projects. Little did they know that their partnership would lay the foundation for some of the most iconic songs in hip hop history. The other key figure in Nate Dogg's early life was his cousin, Calvin Cordozar Broadus Jr., better known as Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg's magnetic personality and undeniable talent made a lasting impression on Nate Dogg, and the two formed a deep bond that would shape their musical careers. At the tender age of 17, Nate Dogg made a life-altering decision. Instead of following the traditional route of completing high school, he made the bold choice to drop out, leave home to pursue his dreams. With a burning desire to make something of himself, Nate Dogg sought a new direction in life. He found himself drawn to the call of duty and enlisted in the prestigious United States Marine Corps. During his time in the Marines, Nate Dogg underwent rigorous training, honing his discipline and resilience. He was stationed at Camp Schwab in Okinawa, Japan, where he served as an ammunition specialist in the Material Readiness Battalion of the 3rd Force Service Support Group. Following three years as an ammunition specialist, he was discharged in 1989. Hale would later say he joined the military because he wanted to see if he was a man. After serving his country, Nate Dogg returned to civilian life with a newfound determination to pursue his passion for music. Inspired by their shared passion for music, Nate Dogg, Snoop Dogg, and Warren G decided to form a rap group. They named themselves 213 after the area code of Los Angeles, Long Beach, California. The trio began honing their skills, writing lyrics, and crafting beats that would soon catch the attention of industry insiders. In 1990, 213 recorded a demo tape in their hometown of Long Beach. This tape would prove to be a turning point in Nate Dogg's career. Fate intervened when the demo tape made its way into the hands of Andre Ronald, also known as Dr. Dre, a renowned producer, rapper, and also Warren G's half-brother. Dr. Dre happened to hear the tape at a bachelor party and was immediately struck by the raw talent displayed by Nate Dogg, Snoop Dogg, and Warren G. Impressed by their unique sound and undeniable chemistry, Dr. signed Snoop Dogg and later Nate Dogg to Death Row Records, a prominent record label at the time. This was a significant milestone for Nate Dogg as it marked the beginning of his professional music career, stardom. With his signing to Death Row Records, Nate Dogg's career skyrocketed to new heights. At the time, Death Row Records was a haven for young creatives. 
Nate Dogg's first major label placement came with his contribution to the iconic track These Nudes on Dr. Dre's 1992 record titled The Chronic. Nate Dogg's trademark singing style, which complemented the emerging gangster rap sound known as G-Funk, was met with critical acclaim. It was clear that Nate Dogg's talent was destined for greatness. His partnership with Dre's record opened doors to collaborations with some of the biggest names in the industry, including his friend Snoop Dogg, who released his debut solo album, Doggy Style, in 1993. While Nate Dogg only featured once on Snoop Dogg's debut album, Doggy Style, with the sexually charged track, Ain't No Fun, it was his collaboration with Warren G on Regulate that would prove to be a turning point in his career. When Regulate hit the airwaves in 1994, it became an instant sensation. The song's infectious groove, catchy melody, and relatable lyrics struck a chord with listeners from all walks of life. It quickly climbed the charts, reaching the top spot on the Billboard Hot 100 and solidifying Nate Dogg and Warren G as forces to be reckoned with in the hip-hop world. But the impact of Regulate extended far beyond its chart success. The song became an anthem for a generation, capturing the essence of the West Coast rap scene and resonating with fans worldwide. Its narrative, inspired by a true story of a late-night encounter, painted a vivid picture of life in Long Beach, California, and the challenges faced by young men trying to navigate the streets. Regulate not only showcased Nate Dogg's smooth vocals and Warren G's slick rhymes, but also highlighted their undeniable chemistry as collaborators. Their seamless back-and-forth delivery and the way their voices complemented each other created a sonic experience that was truly unique. It was this chemistry that would set the stage for future collaborations and solidify their place in music history. History. The single sold over 2 million copies, earning it double platinum certification. It was also nominated for a Grammy Award for Best Rap Performance in 1995. The song's impact extended beyond the charts, solidifying Nate Dogg's reputation as a talented artist and earning him a dedicated fan base. Following the success of Regulate, Nate Dogg's career soared to new heights. As Nate Dogg's career soared to new heights, his collaborations with other artists became a testament to his unparalleled talent as the King of Hooks. Artists from various genres sought out Nate Dogg's signature sound to add depth and catchiness to their tracks. Nate Dogg lent his vocals to numerous singles and albums, including Tupac Shakur's All Eyes On Me in 1996. One of Nate Dogg's most iconic collaborations came in 1999 with Dr. Dre's The Next Episode. The song, featuring Nate Dogg's unforgettable hook, became an instant hit and remains a hip-hop anthem to this day. His smooth vocals added a layer of soul to the track, elevating it to new heights. It's the way he did it and however he felt and at that point he gonna talk about it and he gonna sing it in a way to where you listen like Damn. As Nate Dogg's career began to take off, Death Row Records became embroiled in a series of controversies. Snoop Dogg was facing a murder charge, and tensions with Bad Boy Records were escalating. The murder of Tupac Shakur in 1996 further heightened the tensions within and beyond the Death Row camp. In 1998, Nate Dogg made a pivotal decision to leave Death Row Records and join Dogg Foundation Records, a move that allowed him to explore his artistic vision and establish himself as a solo artist. That same year, he released his debut debut album, G-Funk Classics Vol. 1 and 2, a double-disc project that showcased his unique blend of hip-hop and R&B. The album featured standout tracks such as Never Leave Me Alone, These Days, and Nobody Does It Better. This goes further to solidify Nate Dogg's reputation as a master of hooks and melodies. However, the album performed below expected. It fell short of the coveted 500,000 copies mark. The commercial reception of the album left Nate a bit disappointed, but he pressed on and continued to make music and collaborated with more artists. In the early 2000s, Nate Dogg's reach extended far beyond his West Coast stomping grounds. In 2002, he collaborated with Eminem on the chart-topping hit, Till I Collapse. His powerful vocals provided the perfect complement to Eminem's intense verses, creating a dynamic and memorable track. He lent his voice to some of hip-hop's most iconic anthems, collaborating with artists from the East Coast to the Dirty South. His ability to seamlessly blend his soulful sound with different styles and genres solidified his status as a versatile and influential artist. Nate Dogg's smooth vocals elevated the already impressive collaboration to new heights. His contribution to the Rottweiler-produced instrumental added a touch of soul and brought a unique dynamic to the song. Nate Dogg's ties to Dr. Dre's Aftermath Entertainment remained strong and he continued to 
collaborate with artists from the label. One standout example is his appearance on 50 Cent's hit single 21 Questions. Nate Dogg's melodic chorus perfectly complemented 50 Cent's introspective verses, creating a timeless track that resonated with listeners on a deep level. The song became a commercial success and further solidified Nate Dogg's reputation as the go-to artist for unforgettable hooks. Throughout his career, Nate Dogg remained loyal to his West Coast roots. He continued to collaborate with fellow artists from the region, many of whom he considered friends. His former Death Row collaborators, such as Snoop Dogg, Daz Dillinger, and Corrupt Young Gotti, frequently sought his talents for their projects. Another notable collaboration came when Ludacris dropped his hit single, Area Codes. Nate Dogg's presence on the track added a layer of charm and playfulness, perfectly complementing Ludacris's witty and charismatic verses. The song became a chart-topping success, showcasing Nate Dogg's ability to create memorable hooks that resonated with all audiences worldwide. But Nate Dogg's collaborations weren't limited to mainstream artists. He also lent his talents to underground and alternative acts, further expanding his musical reach. When Most Def and Pharaoh Hey Monch united on the track Oh No, despite his undeniable talent and success, behind the scenes, Nate Dogg faced numerous challenges, personal struggles. His personal life was marred by legal controversies and drug addiction. Long Beach, California is just street life, period, all day, every day. And, uh, so we all got caught up in, the, in you know, that, that way of life. From the early 1990s to the later years of his career, Nate Dogg faced a series of legal issues that tested his resilience and had a significant impact on his personal and professional life. In 1991, Nate Dogg found himself facing a charge of robbery at a check changer's shop. The allegations were serious, but Nate Dogg maintained his innocence throughout the legal proceedings. After a thorough investigation and a fair trial, he was ultimately acquitted of the charges. This victory provided a glimmer of hope amidst the legal battles that would follow. Three years later, in 1994, Nate Dogg faced another robbery charge, this time for an incident at a Taco Bell in San Pedro. Once again, he found himself in the midst of a legal battle that threatened to overshadow his burgeoning music career. However, just as before, Nate Dogg was able to prove his innocence and was acquitted of the charges. While Nate Dogg managed to navigate his way through these initial legal challenges, the years that followed would bring new obstacles and legal troubles. In 1996, a year after the success of Regulate, he was convicted of a drug offense in Los Angeles County. This conviction marked a turning point in his life and career as he faced the consequences of his actions and the impact they would have on his future endeavors. During his time at Death Row Records, he also became embroiled in high-profile feuds with artists from Ruthless Records. These feuds escalated through diss tracks and public insults, creating a tense atmosphere within the industry. One notable incident occurred during a video shoot on a golf course, where Nate Dogg was filmed striking a rival artist with a golf club. This physical altercation further fueled the animosity between the two camps and added to the tabloid headlines surrounding Nate Dogg. Throughout his legal battles, Nate Dogg's music career continued to thrive. His collaborations with various artists remained highly sought after, and his soulful vocals continued to captivate audiences. However, the legal issues he faced undoubtedly took a toll on his personal and professional life. Nate Dogg at this time began battling with drug and alcohol addiction. Nate's addiction to Hennessy, a popular brand of cognac, became a central part of his life, consuming him in a destructive cycle. The pressures of fame, the fast-paced lifestyle, and the temptations of the music industry took a toll on him, leading him down a dangerous path of substance abuse. As the 2000s began, Nate Dogg's addiction started to affect his ability to fulfill his personal and professional commitments. The once reliable and talented artist was now struggling to maintain his health and focus on his music. His love for women also became intertwined with his music career. Nate's love for women sometimes led to complications and controversies, resulting in legal troubles and public scrutiny. Nate Dogg would ultimately father nine children by several women. In the year 2000, Nate Dogg faced one of the most serious legal challenges of his life. He was accused of assaulting his former girlfriend and setting her mother's car on fire in Lakewood, California. The charges against him were severe, including including kidnapping, domestic violence, terrorist threats, and arson. During this tumultuous period, Nate Dogg's longtime collaborator and friend, Dr. Dre, stepped in to support him. Dr. Dre posted a $1 million bond to secure Nate, Dogg's release during the legal proceedings. However, as the case unfolded, the charges of kidnapping, domestic violence, terrorist threats, and arson were ultimately dismissed. Nate Dogg pleaded no contest to illegal gun possession by a felon, a charge that carried its own set of consequences. As a result of his plea, Nate Dogg received a $1,000 fine and was sentenced to three years probation. This legal outcome marked a significant turning point in his life as he grappled with the repercussions of his actions and the impact they had on his personal and professional relationships. It was a 
challenging period for Nate Dogg, but he remained determined to move forward and rebuild his life. In 2002, Nate Dogg faced yet another legal issue when a tour bus he was traveling on was found with two pistols and four ounces of cannabis. He was booked and subsequently released on $3,500 bond. The charges related to the weapons were eventually dropped, but Nate Dogg pleaded guilty to a drug charge. As part of his sentence, he was placed on probation, required to perform community service, and mandated to attend drug counseling. The legal challenges continued to follow Nate Dogg in the years that followed. In 2006, he faced misdemeanor charges of aggravated trespassing, telephone harassment, battery assault, dissuading a witness from reporting a crime, and breaking a restraining order. Nate wanted the ring back. And she was with a boyfriend, and Nate ran up in the house, trying to get the ring back, and the boy said something to him and Nate knocked him out. The allegations were serious and further compounded the legal troubles that had plagued him throughout his career. In 2008, Nate Dogg pleaded guilty to charges of trespassing and battery. As a result, he lost his gun ownership rights for 10 years and was sentenced to three years probation. Additionally, he was ordered to participate in a domestic violence intervention program, highlighting the need for rehabilitation and personal growth. During this time, Nate Dogg also faced allegations of criminal threats and stalking. It was alleged that he had threatened his estranged wife via email and engaged in a high-speed chase on Interstate 405. However, in April 2009, the charges were dropped as the alleged victim failed to contact prosecutors. It was a bittersweet victory for Nate Dogg, as he was relieved of these charges, but still faced the consequences of his actions. In April 2009, Nate Dogg faced yet another legal issue related to driving under the influence of drugs. These charges further complicated his legal standing and added to the challenges he had already endured. Despite the challenges he faced, Nate Dogg continued to make music and release albums. However, his personal battles overshadowed his musical achievements and his solo albums received only moderate success, The Turning Point. As the years went on, Nate Dogg's health began to deteriorate. In December 2007, he suffered his first stroke, which was believed to be linked to a car crash he was involved in with his then-girlfriend. When that car flipped and he got staples in his head because he kept drinking. The stroke left him hospitalized at Pomona Valley Hospital Medical Center, where he received immediate medical attention. Although the stroke weakened the left side of his body, his cognition and voice remained unaffected, giving hope for a full recovery. Fans and loved ones rallied around Nate Dogg, sending their well wishes and support during this difficult time. After a week in the hospital, Hospital, Nate Dogg entered a rehabilitation facility to begin the arduous process of recovery. While in rehab, Nate's drinking and drug habits persisted. I thought you said you broke up with her. And he was like, nah, I can't break up with her yet. I, I still love her. And I didn't know what the hell they was talking about. Then I looked down and it was a bottle of Hennessy right by his leg. This marked the beginning of the end. Nate Dogg would return to his gospel roots by forming a gospel choir called Innate Praise, co-founded with his friend. He was like, yeah, man, I want to start a choir. And I was just like, really? He's like, yeah, I want to start a choir. He was like, go on Craigslist and host auditions for this coming weekend. I said, okay. He wanted to return to his gospel roots to make his mother proud and produce music that his parents would feel comfortable listening to. On September 12, 2008, he suffered a second stroke that left him completely paralyzed. This devastating turn of events marked the final chapter in Nate Dogg's life as he battled the physical limitations imposed by his condition. The road to recovery became even more challenging and the future seemed uncertain. The strokes inflicted a profound toll on Nate Dogg's physical capabilities, which led him to be put under sedation and given a breathing tube. Nate had to literally give up everything that he did. He couldn't take care of himself. Paralyzed from the neck down and robbed of his ability to speak, he faced immense physical and emotional challenges. I got a group of letters and I would say, is it J? And he would just look straight. Is it K? He would look straight. But when I say, is it L? We communicated by him looking up. This drastic shift in health necessitated his use of a wheelchair, marking a stark departure from his once vibrant and energetic stage presence. The aftermath of the strokes presented not only a formidable obstacle to his professional endeavors, but also introduced a host of new challenges into his personal life, reshaping the trajectory of both his career and well-being. Amidst the myriad health challenges that Nate Dogg faced, his devoted fan base remained a pillar of unwavering support. Flooded with messages brimming with love and encouragement, 
Fans passionately expressed their admiration for his unparalleled talent and indomitable resilience in the face of adversity. Beyond the virtual realm, his circle of friends made heartfelt visits, offering companionship and solace during trying times. Put his little hat on, they put him in a wheelchair, I push him outside and I'm just talking to him like, you know, you know I love you cause I got your back. You know, just giving him making my dude feel like he's supposed to. The broader music community, acknowledging Nate Dogg's substantial contributions and the lasting impact he had woven into the fabric of the industry, rallied around him, reinforcing the collective recognition of his enduring influence. Rap star Nate Dogg, a frequent collaborator with fellow hip-hop legend Snoop Dogg, died on Tuesday night from, at the time of this report, undisclosed causes. In 2011, the music world was shaken by the heartbreaking news of Nate Dogg's untimely passing. Nate Dogg died on March 15, 2011, in Long Beach, California, at age 41. On March 17, his attorney Mark Garagos confirmed that the circumstances surrounding Nate Dogg's death were intricately linked to the relentless health struggles he had faced in 2007 and 2008. He was buried at Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Long Beach. Many artists within the hip-hop scene paid their respects to Nate Dogg, as he had worked with so many throughout the years and made staple contributions to many of hip-hop's most iconic songs. Legacy Nate Dogg brought unparalleled credibility to the hip-hop genre. Collaborating with iconic figures such as Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, and Tupac Shakur, he navigated the realms of notorious gangster rap, establishing himself as a cornerstone within the industry. Nate Dogg possessed a voice that transcended traditional boundaries. His vocals weren't just notes, they were stories told with an authenticity that set him apart from his peers. While artists like Akon, Lil Mo, and T-Pain have also left their mark with soulful hooks, Nate Dogg's voice was a rare and unparalleled instrument. Nate Dogg had the ability to make you feel every word, every emotion, and every story he sang. His soulful vocals had a way of touching the deepest parts of your soul, leaving a lasting impact that few artists could achieve. His unique style and delivery breathed life into lyrics that others might shy away from. He had a way of making even the most controversial topics relatable and accessible. His ability to find humanity in the darkest corners of gangster rap was truly remarkable. He made it okay for that dude from the hood to find a song that he could sing to, that he could be emotional. What truly elevated Nate Dogg's impact when he started was his innovative approach to gangster rap. While the genre was known for its gritty lyrics and aggressive beats, Nate Dogg brought a soulful depth that made the music more palatable to a broader audience. Nate Dogg's influence extended beyond the boundaries of gangster rap. He had a knack for seamlessly navigating between R&B and hip-hop, creating a harmonious balance that appealed to both genres. By integrating an R&B artist for the hook and a rapper for the verses, Nate Dogg struck a chord with listeners from all musical backgrounds. This equilibrium not only made his music radio-friendly, but also propelled him to reach a vast and diverse audience. Nate Dogg's ability to bridge the gap between two seemingly different worlds was groundbreaking and set a new standard for collaboration in the music industry. His impact on R&B and hip-hop can not be overstated. His soulful hooks and smooth vocals became a staple in the genre, influencing countless artists who have followed in his footsteps. His legacy can be heard in the music of today, a testament to his enduring impact on the industry. Nate Dogg's impact on music is undeniable. From his collaborations with iconic figures to his soulful vocals that transcended boundaries, he left an indelible mark on the hip-hop genre. Nate Dogg's ability to seamlessly blend his smooth vocals with the rap prowess of his counterparts created an artistic equilibrium that rendered their songs unforgettable. But Nate Dogg's influence extends far beyond his own music. He inspired countless artists who have followed in his footsteps, carrying on his legacy and keeping his soulful sound alive. His imprint on the music industry remains immeasurable, as his enduring impact continues to shape the future generations of musicians. Nate Dogg's legacy is not just about redefining the hook. It's about infusing soulful depth into the very fabric of his music. His voice, his collaborations, and his innovative of approach have left an everlasting impact on the genre. The echoes of his influence reverberate through the work of countless artists today, standing as a testament to his enduring impact. In the annals of musical history, Nate Dogg stands tall as an icon whose legacy continues to inspire and shape the future generations of musicians. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the life of Nate Dogg. Please take a moment to explore more videos.